Zach Lowe on the Warriors court staying together. Based on what I've heard and what I think and how they're playing on the court, I would bet on Steph, Clay, and Draymond all being on the Warriors next year, and if they have to cut costs, look at other ways to cut costs. Well, there's a lot of people sending me some. I don't know if you saw this, Alan. My guy's at the golf spot. What up, Christian? What up, everybody up there at the golf spot? Pleasant Hill, I'll see you next week. Um, I got a text yesterday. And it wasn't from one of them. It was, from some, it was a couple people. They sent me this screenshot of Jordan Poole in game five. And he was kind of off to the side in the bad body language. And, you know, I the whole Jordan Poole situation, I think we piled on him so much. I'm just cool. I'm just hoping that Jordan Poole, hey, man, give us 11 to 15, play control basketball, don't turn it over. They need Jordan Poole if they want to get through this series. You can't have a goose egg from Jordan Poole. You can't have Jordan Poole, you know, compromise and being a negative, a net rating or whatever it is, a net negative, whatever they call it. You need Jordan Poole if you want to win this championship, if you want to get to five. Just like you need Andrew Wiggins, you need everybody. But Jordan Poole, I just felt like, I mean, you see it on Twitter. You're on there. You're active. You're doing numbers. It's just a lot. It's yeah. a lot considering what he's been through. So I thought it was a step in the right direction for him the other night, although he was 5-14. of 14, But you need him tonight against the L.A. Lakers, especially especially if Wiggins can't go. Yeah, and it's to the point now, Bonte, where, and I get it because they're not all great looks, but this is why it's it's worrisome in terms of once the season does end. Now we're to the point where, you know, you go on social media and people are, you're, you're, you're dissecting the way Jordan Poole is clapping Right. But when the Warriors, somebody made a big shot and Jordan Poole is just clapping, you know, but he doesn't have a smile. And we know Jordan Poole. I mean, he's all over the place with his emotions and he, he's very uh, the way he, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. But a majority of the time, he's very excitable and very happy. So I didn't take anything by it. But my point is we're, we're to the point now where I don't know if this thing can get back because now we're breaking down the way he claps and Everybody sees everything nowadays. It's just tough. So as much as Clay loves throwing up the four fingers, you're not throwing up four without Jordan Poole. That's what it is. Right. So I think the question is, once you do, number one, you, you'd you love for him to show up today. Maybe he has it. It's crazy to say a throwback game when he's so young, but maybe he does have a throwback game. And, and, and honestly, he really wasn't the same once Clay came back. Right. Last season. He wasn't. But hopefully you have a throwback game. With Jordan Poole, a classic game or, or, or game that meets the bag that he's about to get. And then once you get to the offseason, the question becomes, look, he had a down year. Right. Are, are, are the Warriors, is it is it that bad that the Warriors are willing to sell him and, and mm-hmm. not get back what they maybe thought that they would mm-hmm. early when they, when they made this deal and thought it was a possibility? Because if he did ball out, you wouldn't be wanting to trade right. him. No so doubt. now you're going to have to find a sucker. We don't have to talk about that now, but I think it is a conversation because Jordan Poole, I mean, and, and here's we the thing. We don't know if Jordan Poole wants to stay here. Jordan don't know Poole, if he wants to be here. Exactly. He, after this. he made his first shot in game five, and he actually did something very similar to Steph. And I always thought something that kind of flew under the radar was how much Jordan Poole does emulate Steph. I felt like, wow, a lot of people should be talking about this a lot more. Right. You know, sometimes he'll, he'll wear his stuff the same way Steph wears it. And he, you know, it, just a lot of different things. So he makes his shot in game five and he throws his hands up, which is something that Steph does a lot if Steph's been mm-hmm. struggling and Clay to a certain degree. Yep. And I'm thinking, I just wish I was a fly on the wall because it seems like, yeah, he's he is the annoying little brother. But ultimately, I do think he looks up to them. No, he does. You look know, up he to does. Them. And, he, and, and one thing that gets misconstrued about Jordan Poole is he works his ass off. He does. From day one till now, he's in the gym early. He's in the gym late. He's working on his game. He's engaged. He wants to be a hooper. He wants to win. Again, last year during the postseason, somebody asked him in the midst of that run to the fourth championship, hey, what's the most, what's, what? What have you learned so far about the postseason? It goes, it's all about winning. Mm-hmm. It's all about sacrificing and winning basketball games. And that's what it's about. So, um, look, he, he hits the threes. And I watched him in game five very closely, very closely. And he was in rhythm. He was on balance for the most part. 
Not a couple shots. He's struggling from three. He struggled all year from the three-point line, shooting 32% in a regular season. But he was on balance in game number five, and I'll take that. And the no turnovers. And the biggest play, one of the biggest plays of the game was right before halftime. Mm -hmm. Clay hits a three, and then Steph hits a three at the buzzer to go up 11 and go up double digits into the break. With Jordan Poole with about 14 seconds left, had to wear with all to be patient and get the ball back up to Steph Curry. Say, all right, Steph, this is your turn. Cook, this is you. Bring us home. And that shot at the end of the half cap, capped off a 16-5 run. You come out of the third quarter, you go on a 9-2 run to start that frame, and boom, you're off to the races, and you're heading to Hollywood for game six. So I, I think Jordan Poole, <clears throat> especially tonight, if Wiggins is compromised at some point whatsoever, that three-guard lineup with Clay, Poole, and Curry, you may have to unleash it. And on the defensive end, you may have to play a little zone to help you on defense. So if you want to help out on defense – and you're saying, oh, man, Steph and Jordan Poole on defense, they're barbecue chicken, blah, blah, blah. Well, drop into a zone. Yeah. Drop into a zone, help yourselves out. But that three-guard lineup, I think, could create problems if Wiggins is compromised tonight. Exactly. And even if he plays, if it just doesn't really look the same, just because he plays, it's not a video game. It doesn't mean that Wiggins is going to be exactly who we know Wiggins to be. And ultimately, you know, getting back to Jordan Poole, yeah, maybe he did have a little bit yep. too much dip on his chip. Maybe he was lost in the sauce a little bit, but it's happened to basically everybody besides Steph Curry, to be right. completely honest with you. And who knows about Steph early in his career? Mm -hmm. It was just different back then. So mm -hmm. you have Clay Thompson, who allegedly wants a max. Does anybody think mm -hmm. that Clay deserves a max? I don't know. Draymond, who also said he wanted a max. So th this is some. This is not. And I know that they've done more. I'm not saying that they haven't. But this is not something that's exclusive to Jordan Poole. And no I feel doubt. like that's what it's turned into. And again, he could si continue to silence the haters and the doubters and the naysayers as his play continues to get better. Mm -hmm. And we hope that he just completely turns the corner and gets rolling. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. All right. If case you're just waking up and don't know about Andrew Wiggins, he is questionable. Questionable tonight um, with a rib injury. He's got a left rib injury, and let me get the specifics here on that injury. Anthony Slater broke it yesterday uh, as we're eating dinner, and we're thinking, oh, God, another injury, just when it seems like they're getting healthy. Um, he's listed as questionable for Gabe Six with a left costal cartilage fracture. Now, we got Dr. Narab Panya. He's got some South Spadoni. What's up? Oh, oh, we got we got it in the box? We got Dr. Narab Panya? Uh, why don't you play it for me? Why don't you play it with Dirt? Oh, 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 okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, here's Dr. Narab Padia. Quick thread on the costal cartilage injuries. Andrew Wiggins. Costal cartilage is the cartilage that connects the ribs to the sternum. This cartilage allows a rib cage to expand and absorbs shock for trauma. It is a variation of a rib fracture. Return to play depends largely on pain relief. If the athlete can breathe, function with pain, then they can return to play. There are various ways to control the pain. Injection, Tylenol, Advil, painkillers, you name it. And it sounds like Wiggins may have to go down that road. Now, Marcus Thompson wrote about this in The Athletic. He said, what was Andrew Wiggins like after the game? Wiggins was in noticeable pain after the game, holding his side in his locker and moving gingerly. He hit the cold tub and came out still visibly in pain, occasionally holding his left side. His spirit seemed to be fine, and he still did his post-game interview. Wiggins usually takes most opportunities to get out of the podium, duty and an injury would have been a worthy reason he could have also done it at his locker but he made the trip up the stairs into the interview room though in obvious pain wiggins as he left the locker room said he would be fine and that he expected to play it on the warriors instagram page you know when they showed the shots of them at the airport getting on the plane he didn't have two he had a, a, a luggage in his right head had a piece of luggage in his left hand he was smiling i think wiggins is going to give it a go tonight he's definitely going to give it a go and, and i'll tell you what bonte they need to give him. They need to give him whatever they get. The Kings gave De'Aaron Fox because De'Aaron Fox had a fractured mm -hmm. finger. He was diving after loose balls and, and not even thinking twice. So whatever De'Aaron Fox had, right? Give Wiggins the same thing because no De'Aaron Fox was not fearful at all with that finger. But ultimately, you know, some of the things that we talked about and Wiggins just being available and Wiggins, he's a dog. He's a dog. We he, talk, be, you know, he, he needs to be your second best player, I think, to win the championship like he was last year. Whether it, it, whether you do the pecking order thing first, yeah. second, third, but twenty five seventy five, and he was in. He was at the eighteen field goal attempt range. Mm -hmm. 
been talking about that. He needs to be 15 and 19 field goal attempts. He has a matchup, a mismatch. Mm -hmm. Whether it's LeBron, who doesn't want to play any defense at this stage of his career, he likes to take plays off. I think you can go at LeBron and get into his legs. Remember, he's 38 years old. Whether it's Austin Reeve, whether it's D'Lo or Schroeder, we just can cook these dudes. Yeah, yeah, and... It's something that we haven't seen a lot, right? We all complain about the foul calls. And, and, and you bring up a good point, Bonte, because a lot of us get caught up in terms and we don't actually think about the logistics of those terms. So the free throw disparity, we know what it is. We also know, you know, flopping aside, the Lakers shoot the most, the Warriors shoot the least, the Warriors are a jump shooting team. That's why Clay Thompson has, shoot, right. you only shoot 29% if you're just not shooting layups right. at all. Right. And when you look at, so then everybody sits here and runs around and says, drive to the basket, drive to the basket. Right now, Bonte, let's count everybody on the Warriors that has the ability, the legit ability against, I, I would say, all of the Lakers defenders that you mm -hmm. see are at least average, right. right? I don't know if there's anyone you can maybe D'Lo you could hunt, but, right? But but that's really the main guy. Not talking maybe about Austin Reeves, maybe a Austin bit. Reeves a little bit, but you know he gives that Divincenzo type mm -hmm. effort, if you will. So let, let's talk about who can really get to the cup. There's Steph, there's Wiggins, I got Jordan Poole. Who else do you have? Kaminga, but that's but Kaminga's he's not, not playing. playing. He's not playing at all. Everybody keeps saying, get Div to the cup. Who's going to get to the cup besides D those three? Yeah, DiVincenzo at times. He passes it under yeah, the hoop. Yeah, no doubt. No, he, no, there's not too many guys. But with that said, you can pull up for that mid-range. Mm -hmm. The mid-range yes. is still open. Yes. The mid-range is still open. But the way they're executing and drawing Anthony Davis like they did in game number five, look, the Warriors have actually held their own and points in the paint the last couple nights. They really have. Um by drawing Anthony Davis out of the paint, mm -hmm. by going back door on it with GP2 in that dunker spot. So they've done a great job of attacking the rim and being very clever in the way they attack the rim. If Anthony Davis is there lurking, they're like, yeah, we're not going to try him. But let's move him around a little bit here, get some back doors, some quick actions there, get behind LeBron James. LeBron James has quietly been awful on defense the last two nights, mm -hmm. the last two games, I should say. And GP2, has been a, been a uh, he's benefited from that. Uh, more so than anybody on that roster, playing in that dunker spot, going back door, easy dunks, yeah. layups. And you see the point production, 15 in game four, 13 in game five. So um, you got to get Anthony Davis moving. But to, to your point, there's only a handful of guys who can get to the cup at Right. Well. Everyone, just drive. Who, Clay's not going to drive. He doesn't no, do that's that. Not what he does. That's, not, that's not what he does. You know, you bring up LeBron and, and his lackluster defense. You know, he reminds me of in, in Spadone, you know, it's Raider boys. It is tough, but he does give me Derek Carr vibes at times. When Derek Carr, bad throw, and, and he's, he's just showing somebody up. Oh, and you yeah. have no clue oh, if it was I, a bad route dude, I, or if you just overthrew him. LeBron, he gets cooked and he's looking oh, around. Well, Where was the help? Where he was, was open down court in one possession in game five. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't get it, and he was pouting the whole way into yeah. a timeout. <laughs> That's what he does. I'm not going to miss the Derek Carr chin strap removal. Oh, just, my oh, gosh. Peach, because Hunter Renfro, you missed him by 10 freaking just yards, point. buddy. Just point. Oh, just my point. Gosh. Saints you don't know fans, where you're pointing. Saints fans have no idea what they're in for. Yeah. They have no idea what they're in for. All right, you're listening to 95 to 95 7 a game. KGMZ FM and AC1 San Francisco always live on the free Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app and favorite 95 7 a game for the best and most up to date sports coverage. And do not forget that you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log on and search 95 7 a game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Alan Styles in for Joe Shasky, the butcher. We got Spadoni in the building. We got Sam Lubbin in the good mood. Sam Lubbin, man. Look, I love, can I put your business out there in the street, Sam? Can I put your business out there in the street? I mean, I guess that depends on the business, but yeah, let's go uh, for it. The business is you're going to be living around Lake Barrett, right? That is true. Yeah, tomorrow I'm uh, moving into a new apartment over uh, in that area. Single yeah. guy wow. living around the lake in wow. Oakland, California. Sam Lovin moving on up in the world. Oh, Sam is big time, dude. He's been glowing this week. Yeah. Casey Schmidt is up. It's been a good week in the in the world of Sam Lovin, new newest Oakland resident. So yeah, I'm very excited for that. Yeah. I, I want the new show. Sam takes the city. That's what I want. <laughs> well, Sam takes the town. That's Sam oh. takes the town. Oh. We wrap the town now. Down. Hey, tell him Lovin. Okay, I meant uh, a city. Tell him Give Lovin. Me a break. We, we know Alan Styles. You know Conquer Boy De La Salle. Hey, Sea World, man. Sea World. But hey, yeah. Alan's rocking Alameda it. now. So yeah. you know we're, I mean, we're basically I, neighbors now. It's Alan Mita, by the way. <laughs> Alan Mita. I like that oh, one a lot. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that right now. Let me tell you that right now. The home of Ray Ratto. That's no, right. That's a, <laughs> I saw, you know, I was kicking it with Jimmy Rollins at the Flex Friday. I was with Jimmy Rollins a couple days ago. It's all good. He loves Alan Mita. 
Oh, my good. God. Oh, man. So we got Lutman in the town now. He's feeling good. We got Alan Mita. Spadoni, don't even bring up Monterey. <laughs> Whatever. That's Pacific, Pacific Grove, Grove, please. All right. You, James Butterfly Kincaid. Town, USA, Bonte. Oh Home gosh. of the Monarchs. Oh Come on. God. You know what? I'm going to go to Antonio for.